Hey everybody and welcome to this introductory video on free fall. Alright, so today's video objectives is to define and describe the characteristics of an object in free fall and calculate the different variables of motion for an object in free fall. So first we're going to start with a little thought experiment. Alright, which is going to fall faster, a bowling ball or a feather? Just kind of out there in normal world with real air all around, which one's going to hit the ground first? And then let's redo that experiment in a vacuum. Does that make a difference if we remove all of the air? I wonder. So objects that are in free fall are only experiencing the influence of gravity. And gravity here on Earth exerts an acceleration of negative 9.8 meters per second squared, which for some of our examples will just round that to negative 10 just to make the math a little numbers a little easier to work with. Now because the motion um, quantities that we are dealing with are vectors, we're going to indicate upward as a positive direction and downward as the negative direction, which is why acceleration, because it points down, is going to be a negative value. Now there are three types of different free fall problems. Um, we're going to go through the first an example of the first one in this video and we'll save the rest for later in this in this section. So the three types are when objects are just simply dropped where they have an initial velocity of zero, objects that are thrown downward so they'll have a negative initial velocity, and objects that are thrown upward which will have a positive initial velocity. Now symmetrical motion occurs when an object it goes upward and then returns to the same vertical position where it was launched from or thrown from. Now when this happens, the time up will equal the time down, and acceleration is always acting on the object no matter where it is. So when the object gets to the top of the arc, it's going to have zero meter per second um, velocity because it stops going up and the acceleration is going to bring it back down towards the ground. Now, for a symmetrical motion, an object's velocity when it returns to the same height is going to be the same as when it was thrown up, but instead the velocity is going to be pointed downward as it's now coming down. Now, we're going to be utilizing our same equations that we talked about in uniform acceleration because when you're in free fall, you have uniform acceleration due to gravity. And the only difference we're going to make with these equations is that anywhere there is an x, we're going to just change that to y to indicate the vertical direction. All right, so let's draw out what happens when we have a rock that is dropped off a 100-meter cliff and when a rock is thrown straight up with an initial velocity of 20 meters from that same 100-meter tall cliff. And we're also going to use g to be negative 10 meters per second per second just to make it lives a little easier. Okay, so we're going to start here with our first diagram. All right, so here we have our 100 meter tall cliff. All right, and then, then you're standing at the edge. You hold a rock. And it's going to fall straight down. Alright, so our total displacement is going to be negative 100 meters. Now, here our initial velocity is going to be 0 meters per second. Acceleration is our negative 10 meters per second per second. And this is at time equals 0 seconds when we first start the drop. Now, when time equals 1 second, alright, acceleration is still negative 10. Now after that one second our velocity has increased to be negative 10 meters per second. But what are about our displacement? Alright so we're going to use the average um, value here to be equal b plus b naught divided by 2 times time. All right, so uh, negative 10 
plus 0 over 2 times 1 second. This is going to become negative 5 meters. So when it falls here, it has fallen all right, to 5 meters below where it started from. So now it's 95 meters above the ground. Okay. Now after our second second, we fall increase our velocity to negative 20. Same acceleration. That time equals 2 seconds. Now our displacement all right, if we're going to use this, we're going to use the same formula. It can be negative 20 plus negative 10 over 2. And there's been one second of time between those two marks. All right, so negative 20 plus negative 10 is negative 30 divided by 2 is negative 15. So we have fallen another 15 meters down below. So we've fallen another 15 meters down below. So now we're at 80 meters above the ground. And at time equals 3 seconds. We've increased to negative 30. Time is 3 seconds. And delta x is going to be negative 30 plus negative 20 over 2. After another 1 second has passed. And we're going to get negative 25. And so we fall another 25 meters. And so now we are at 55 meters above the ground. And then negative 40 at 4 seconds. That time equals 4. And so delta x is going to be negative 40 plus negative 30 over 2 times 1 second. And this is going to be negative 35. So now we drop 35 meters down, and now we're at uh, 20 meters above the ground. And so we're going to hit pretty pretty soon after this. So not very far. All right. And so we can see like the amount of distance that it falls in between each time interval that is increasing as our object is accelerating. All right. So now let's look at diagram two. This time we're going to throw the rock upwards. above the ground. Alright, so here's our rock. It's going to go straight up. And then it's going to come downward after that. So we got 100 meters. So that time equals 0. Acceleration is negative 10. Velocity is positive 20. Alright, so at time equals 1 second. I'm going to put above because we're going upward. Velocity or acceleration is still the same, but velocity is reduced to 10 meters per second. Our displacement is going to use the same value or the same equation. So 10 plus 20 over 2 times 1. All right, and so that's going to become 15 meters. All right, so we go up. 15 meters so now we're at 115 above the ground and then at time equals two seconds a is negative 10 and velocity is reduced to zero so this is the highest point where the um, rock actually reaches because it is no longer moving upward it's for one brief very very small amount of time equal to zero. It's not moving. It is just hovering there in the air for like one quadrillionth of a second. Very small time, but with the right equipment measurable. Though the right equipment is like stupid expensive. And so it's going to go another five meters 
upward from there. So it reaches a peak height of 120 meters above the ground when it gets thrown upward. And now it's going to start falling backwards or falling back down. So T at three seconds. All right, means velocity is going to be negative 10. And our displacement is now going to come down. And it's going to come down in increments very similar to what we had above. It's going to be 5 meters. So it's back here at the 115 mark. And time equals 4 seconds. Acceleration equals negative 10. Velocity is going to be negative 20. It now returns to the same starting height here at 100. And so that displacement comes down now uh, 15 meters again. Now, velocity, acceleration at five seconds. Velocity is going to be negative 30. Displacement is going to become negative 25 meters. And so now it's going to be down here at 75. Time equals six seconds. Acceleration is going to be negative 10. Velocity is negative 40. And if you want to check the math, you can. Again, we're just using the same equation up here. Um, counting every by every one second. And so now it falls 35 meters to be at 40. And then it's going to go on. And somewhere right before time equals 7 seconds, uh, it's going to hit the ground. So velocity is negative 50, and the displacement would be equal to negative 45 meters. But because it's only 40 meters above the ground, it's going to impact just before we hit 7 seconds. Otherwise, at 7 seconds, it's like below the ground. Okay. So that's just kind of mapping out the motion of what is happening with an object that is dropped and an object that is thrown upward. Now we're going to look at a simple example um, here, just to kind of practice the math again. All right, so we have a penny that is dropped off the Empire State Building, which has a height of 120 meters. So here is some lunatic at the top of the Empire State Building is going to drop a penny down to the ground. So when we drop something, it's going to have an initial velocity of 0 meters per second. Because we're in free fall, we're also ignoring some air resistance in this course. Acceleration is going to be negative 10. Our vertical displacement, delta y, so same idea as delta x that we've learned before, but because it's vertical, we're going to use the y direction. And so that is going to be negative 120 meters because it lands below where it started. All right, and so we want to first find time. All right, so we have initial velocity, acceleration, and displacement. We're going to use our delta y equals initial velocity times time plus one half a t squared equation. Now, because the initial velocity is zero, this goes away, because zero times time is going to be zero. And so we get negative 120 equals one half times, and I'm going to use negative 10 times time squared. All right, so we're going to get, multiply the two over and divide by 10, so you get negative 240 divided by negative 10 equals time squared, and that's going to equal 24. And then we take the square root of 24, which unfortunately is not so nice a number. And we get about 4.9 seconds. All right, and now we have a second question of how fast is the penny going when it actually hits the ground. So now we want to find the final velocity. All right, so final velocity, Vf, is going to squared equals Vi squared. I'm going to use this equation. 
because it has everything that we were initially given. Now you can use time, except because we kind of rounded the number a little bit, it's going to not be as accurate. So v of squared equals 0 plus 2 times negative 10 times negative 120. So v of squared equals, um, it's going to be 2,400. And when we take the square root, vf is going to equal um, a number. And we get 48.99 meters per second. However, remember, velocity is a vector, which means it also has direction. And our penny is going downward. And because the square root is both a positive and a negative answer, it's actually going to be negative 48.99 meters per second. All right. So that is that. That's moving. Hopefully that doesn't kill anybody. Good thing there's a resistance to actually slow it down in real life. All right, so now that you complete the notes, all right, we're going to continue this in class.